Hey YouTube, Jack of all trades here. Well, I get a lot of questions about ham radio. Um, I'm a ham radio operator. My call sign is uh, KC9TJV. Um, and people come into the shack on a regular basis, um, getting their computer fixed. They're just stopping by. Uh, they're interested. I have people come up to me when I'm outside and ask me, "Hey, what's all that stuff you got?" Though I attempt to explain it. <clears throat> and they ask, well, geez, you know, I could never learn all that. That's a lot of stuff, you know. And when you come in here and look at it, it probably does look overwhelming right away. But um, it's not, and it's easy. Um, it sounds like a lot. It's a lot of technical jargon, but um, the language is very simple. Um, so <clears throat> what I want to talk about just a little bit is getting into ham radio. Um, how can you get in? common questions I get, you know, is, you know, I can never learn all this, how do you know all this stuff? Well, you know, it's, um, you pick it up little bit by little bit. There's three classes of licenses. Um, there's a technician, that's the entry level, that's the beginning basic stuff. You're going to use a radio much like this. Um, from there, you can get your general license, that's my current classification as a general operator. That gives me, um, a very broad range of communications. I can use utilize everything HF for the most part and the 2 meter 440 stuff that the technician can. So it's just more bandwidth. Gives me the ability to talk around the world. The 2 meter 440 stuff that a technician has isn't going to talk around the world but uh, he'll be able to talk within 100 miles very well. Um, very high quality audio. Um, a lot of misconceptions with ham radio is you have to learn Morse code. You don't have to learn Morse code. The Morse code testing was removed. Um, you know, everyone thinks that ham radio is all static and it's um, you're listening for aliens or something or you're trying to talk to somebody in Japan that you can't understand anyways. Well, the universal language for radio is English. <clears throat> so. I've talked to people in Japan before, I've talked to people in Australia, Taiwan, I've talked to people all over Africa. It's amazing, you get on radio and boom, everyone's speaking English and you can understand them for the most part. Um, obviously there's some accents, there's some uh, differences that way, but that's what makes radio unique. But uh, a technician doesn't run into a lot of that stuff and that's what you're going to come into, entry level stuff. For a ham radio operation. Another question I get is, well, God, I can never afford it. You know, them radios you guys always talk about are a thousand dollars. Well, <clears throat> two thousand dollars, and they go way up from there. No, you don't need a radio like that to start. This radio right here, delivered to my door, I believe, was a hundred and thirty dollars. It was. Uh, it's a two meter only radio. It's made by Yezu. Um, it's one of my more favorite manufacturers as far as radios is concerned. Uh, I just like the way it's laid out. I like the way the engineers put the stuff together. Um, every one of these major manufacturers for radios engineers the stuff, the menus, sub-menus, and everything a little bit differently. Um, this is the easy one for me to navigate. It made sense to me. Um, so everyone has their own personal preference. This is mine. I'm not preaching for Yezu or Kenwood or anyone else. But, <clears throat> two-meter operation people don't, and you say two meter and all, what is that? That doesn't make any sense neither. Well, an easy way to think of this, the common stuff that we do as technicians, which is going to be the stuff that you're going to do within 100 miles of your house, um, you know, from your house to the repeater out to, a, you know, your car or whatever it might be, or to your buddies or whatever it might be, um, you know, it's going to give you very good quality um, communication is FM. Now if you imagine the radio in your car, um, when you jump in there, the dial starts all the way down to like 88 and it goes all the way up to like 107 or 108. And then it stops. Well that's your car. That's the radio there. That's the band, the allocated band area that you're allowed for FM radio for broadcasting. <clears throat> that's what the FCC is set up. Now for as far as that dial and that radio is concerned, the band continues to go on. So, <clears throat> if we look here, if you were to keep turning that dial, if it imaginarily just kept going, 108, 109, and it kept going up, pretty soon you're going to find yourself in, <clears throat> excuse me, where the, the aircrafts are. All the planes are talking. That's what they're using. And they're using the same 
stuff that your local radio stations use and you get that same crystal clear audio it sounds just like it's coming out of the speakers of your car but it's you talking on the microphone to your your best ham buddy across town now <clears throat> as this dial goes up you find us up in the 144 to 146 range 148 and then it the, continues to go and you end up going into law enforcement, EMS, um, fire service, marine band, um, all those bands, as this goes up, this radio goes all the way to 174. So besides me only being able to talk in my area that my license allows, this radio does much more than that as far as listening is concerned. So <clears throat> I'm able to listen to everything that transpires as far as police, fire, EMS, I'm allowed to actually have this in the vehicle and listen to that stuff running down the road. Um, you need a ham license to do that. If you have a scanner in your car, most states it's illegal if you just have a scanner in there and you're listening to police, law enforcement, whatever, driving down the road. A ham can legally do that. Um, it's a benefit of being a ham. Um, <clears throat> it gives you the ability to hear what's going on around you real time. You can hear emergency communications for um, your local areas, what's going on, like I'm a um, storm spotter, though I'm not a storm chaser where I go chasing after tornadoes, but what I do is I radio into a weather net and I just inform the net officer of the weather conditions in my area when the storms are really bad. And they will relay that information to NOAA and NOAA gets first-hand information from the ground besides what their radars and everything else can show them. So <clears throat> it gives um, it gives Noah a first-hand account of what's transpiring. So that's all two-meter operation. And you also get 440 operation, which there's a lot of repeaters there as well. And a lot of this stuff utilizes repeaters. So a $150 radio can get you into ham radio, and you can do very well and you have very good communications for very long distances from your car to your house to your buddies. This is a 75 watt radio where the CB above it that uh, I'm not sure if you can see or not, legally the FCC only allows you to I believe have four watts. Maybe it's five. This is 75 and it's crystal clear audio. It's, it's unbelievably clear. So <clears throat> it sounds just as good as your cell phone, maybe even a little better in some, certain applications. So it's a, it's a great tool for a ham to get started. You don't need a $1,000 radio. You don't need a $2,000 radio. It costs $14 to get your license. You study a book. You take a 35-question test. That's all you have to do. And you're a ham radio operator. Now, <clears throat> along the way, there's going to be a lot of questions you are going to have. But all you have to do is find an Elmer in your area, which is just a mentor. Somebody who has been a ham like myself for a while and understands what all this stuff is and how it works and is willing to come teach you, help you set the stuff up, and it gives you something to start talking about on the radio while you're setting the stuff up. So you can get out there, start meeting new people, and, you know, with a lot of the prepping community coming around and a lot of people showing a lot of interest in stuff like this for communications, it's a good place to start. You don't have to worry about worldwide communications. You don't have to worry about huge antenna arrays. You can actually use a small radio like this running off a car battery. You can set it up for under $200 with an antenna and coax and everything. Um, and it's working. You can hear everything you need to hear. And you can do what's called a hidden ham, where you actually hide the antenna in your attic. It doesn't have the best performance, but it's going to work better than most things that you have and you're going to be able to get hands-on information up to the date. It's standalone. It doesn't require an internet connection. It doesn't require power from your local grid. If you set it up with your car battery, a 12 simple 12 volt battery, um, it'll listen for a long time on a very small battery. It does use some juice when you're talking. It will use consume quite a bit of amperage, some, some power there, but um, you're able to do quite a bit with a very small unit for very cheap. So people say, you know, oh God, it's going to cost me a thousand dollars or two thousand dollars to get into ham radio. I'm not even going to bother, you know, and I got to learn all this stuff. You don't have to learn very much. You can get into it for about two hundred dollars, and you can be doing really well. 
You can have good solid communications within 100 miles of your place very easily. You can go, instead of even something like this, you can go into a much smaller radio like this. This is 5 watts. Now if you're in a met major metropolitan area where there's a lot of repeaters or you're in a, a area that doesn't have a lot of obstructions in the country, maybe you got a hill nearby that you're on, you can usually reach your repeaters with this. That's why the repeater is there, is to take a small radio and give it a big signal. So it carries it a long ways. Uh, and those things are there and free of charge to use. So it's a great infrastructure, it's already there. When your cell phone goes down, which it will if there's ever a major storm, catastrophe, anything like that, the cell phone towers only stay up for 24 hours. You can lean on this to get in constant incoming information. You can get the weather band is in here, and the, uh, the local one here is right in this area of the band. So you've got weather, and you've got public service. So if you ever have anything that you need as far as <clears throat> um, emergency from the government um, for communications, they're going to be notifying you here. You know, just like a lot of your regular weather radios. This is the same frequency your weather radio in your area probably uses. There's five or six frequencies in this area that they use. So it can also um, give you that information as well. Usually when I drive to work, in the morning, this is what I turn on. I click it on this and I listen to my weather. This is how I know what my weather's gonna be. My job consists of me being outside a lot, so I like to know what the weather report's gonna be. <clears throat> so all that information in a very small package, it's very easy to do, very easy to learn. Um, you can pre-program this stuff with your computer, with some simple software and a cable, and it makes it very easy. Um, and then you can get into to where it looks more like this. And it has predetermined alpha characters that you put in so you know, hey, you know, that's the Rice Lake repeater tower up there. There's Balsam Lake. So I know there's Osseo. <clears throat> it's very simple for me to um, kick to the different repeater towers because I know where they're physically located and I gave them a name. I don't have to worry about all the numbers and different things and tones and splits and a lot of technical jargon that makes it overwhelming for most people. You don't need to worry about that. 200 bucks, you find yourself an Elmer. You take a 35 question test. Any ham that is up and running is going to be able to find you a copy of the book probably so you don't have to buy it or you can go to ARRL's website and you can order the book or the starter guide and study guides and there's help online. So you can get in relatively cheap and um, there's a lot that can be done. You can have a lot of fun. 2 meter 440 as a technician. You get some other privileges and you can do some other things that I'm not going to go into here, but um, this is the mainstay for a technician and uh, you doomsday preppers, um, anybody else out there needs emergency communication, anybody that lives in a rural area that um, cell phone reception is real spotty um, and you need a solid communication, this thing's standalone. It doesn't require anything else to operate. It doesn't require your internet connection. So, you can hook it up to your car and away you go. Just like the days of CB, but instead of only having four or five miles of your CB and spotty communications at best, <clears throat> now you learn how to use the radio correctly, you learn how the antennas work, you put together a pretty good system for cheap, and you're up and talking a long distance. So, pretty much it in a nutshell, YouTube. Thanks for watching.